Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Time to Draw with Mr. Shaw. Today, we're going to be drawing Olaf from Frozen and Frozen 2, a uh, little snowman. He loves warm hugs. Uh, as you're watching the video, you're going to need a piece of paper and something to draw with. It could be a pencil, a pen, a crayon, a marker, uh, whatever you have laying around the house. The paper can be any size. Uh, I just have a regular size piece of photocopy paper here. Um, as you're following along with the video, do your best to keep up. It's okay if you get a little bit lost or need to stop and start over. Just pause the video, rewind, rewatch something if you need to. Uh, unfortunately, I can't answer questions live, but do the best you can. Um, we're going to start out with some simple shapes first. That's the best way to get started with any kind of drawing. So I'm going to start with the top of Olaf's head, and I'm just going to draw a little bump kind of like this. Now when I draw, I tend to draw kind of lightly at first, and then I get a little darker as I go along. Uh, if you need to kind of sketch out those shapes before you darken them in, that works too. Uh, after we have that bump for the top of his head, we're going to do two little bumps on the sides for his cheeks. They kind of look like upside down letter U's. And once you have that on, go ahead and give yourself a nice long loop connecting those two bumps for his cheeks, and that's going to be his little chin coming all the way down here like this. Now we can start doing the things that are going to make Olaf look like Olaf. We're going to start with his nose. He has a carrot for a nose, which is shaped like a cylinder. So I'm going to put a little curve back here and give him a little pointy nose. That's a cone shape. And then I'm going to do some little curved lines along the length of that to make it look a little bit more like a carrot. After that, behind it, we're going to draw two circles. For Olaf's eyes, there's one, two. We can put those little black circles inside and give him some eyebrows. I like to have his eyebrows raised up like this so he looks happy. On top of his head, he's got three little sticks sticking out like this. And then when we start to draw on his mouth, we're going to draw a line from this cheek all the way across to this cheek. If you want to start out kind of lightly first, make sure you're all the way across and then darken it in. We're going to have little dimples in his cheeks, little curved lines just like that. And then we're going to draw a nice big curve going from corner down and all the way back up to that cheek. So draw that nice long curved line. And then he has one big tooth, kind of shaped like a roundish rectangle coming out from the top of his mouth here. So that's Olaf's head. Now we can get onto his body. He's got two big body shapes. One of them is kind of like a loose circle. And then a larger circle underneath it. I'm going to draw them a little crooked because I want Olaf to look like he's kind of dancing and moving around and wiggling his body. Then we're going to draw his two feet. We're going to give him two round little bumps, one coming off the bottom here. Then I'm going to have the other one sticking out to the side up here, almost like he's dancing. Then we're going to color in three circles, one in his top section here, two in his little bottom section. Those are the lumps of coal. They look like buttons going down his body. And then he's got sticks for hands coming off to the sides. One stick out like this. We can give him a little thumb and one, two, three fingers. And then we'll have his other hand coming out in this direction. A little thumb and then one, two, three fingers. And that's a nice little picture of Olaf. Now you could stop there or we can give him a setting. We can give this character a place to be. So one of the first things to do when drawing a setting is you want to show where the ground is and where the sky or the wall or the ceiling or whatever else is. So I'm just going to draw a line. It's called the horizon line across my paper. Now, since Olaf is a snowman, I think I'm going to put him in the snow. So I'm going to make this line a little bumpier now with some little hills, almost like it just snowed. I can add, oops, I made a little mistake here. That's what erasers are for. I can erase this line. I have a little hill of snow. I could have some other 
smoother bumps going on here in the background. Uh, those are my scholars who have practiced drawing landscape, know about a foreground, middle ground, and background. Uh, so now it looks a little snowy. I can just have some light bumps here. Um, but it looks kind of empty. It looks kind of barren out there in the snow. So I can add some trees now. Now trees in the winter don't have any leaves, so I'm just going to start by drawing a trunk. And I can color that in, or I could do a pattern of lines, kind of like the bark of a tree coming down into the snow. If you do little curved lines here like this, it could even look like that tree is popping up out of the snow. That snow could be pretty deep right now. And I'm going to extend some branches out, kind of the same way I did Olaf's hands. And I'm going to give this tree some nice long leafless branches and limbs. That's another word for that. And as those branches come out, they get smaller and break into tinier and tinier pieces. Now, if I have one tree here, this one's pretty close, so it's pretty big, but I can have one further away back here. And to make it look further away, it's going to be a little higher up on my paper. And I'm going to draw it just a little bit smaller like this. Now that tree looks a little further away. Now, since it's winter, I don't want my poor friend Olaf here to melt. I'm not going to make it a sunny day. So I'm going to draw some clouds up in the sky. Uh, I like to draw my clouds with a flat bottom and then give them some nice big poofy curves up on the top. Uh, those look like those nimbus clouds or the cumulo nimbus clouds. And if I want another cloud here behind my tree, I can just draw right through those branches, a nice puffy cloud. I could have the sun peeking out just a little bit here, not enough to melt a snowman, but enough to make it look like it's daytime in my picture. Now, if it is a little bit warm out, if it's looking like it's looking outside here in uh, the Northeast, we could have little patches. I'm just gonna draw some wiggly flat shapes like this. And I could have a little bit of grass peeking out, like spring is just starting. All I'm doing is just drawing little, little triangles and little lines to make it look like the grass might be peeking out. And that's kind of a picture of Olaf doing his transitioning from winter into spring. Happy Olaf dance. Now, this is kind of a picture that might happen in Olaf's world, a snowman dancing around in the snow. But you can really get weird with the types of backgrounds and the types of settings you draw in your picture. Maybe instead of Olaf hanging out in the winter, he could be uh, catching a huge wave out on the beach. Maybe he's not going to melt in the sun. Maybe he can go hang out in the summertime, catch a sick curl on his surfboard. Or maybe you want to send Olaf to space. You could follow the same steps to draw our friend Olaf, but then just change the type of background that you draw. He could be jumping around the moon doing his dance in low gravity. Or you could even take your drawing, flip it upside down, and put Olaf in a completely different type of position. Now he's doing a backflip off a trampoline in a backyard. So here's what I'd like to see. If you're a Henry Johnson Charter School scholar, please take a picture of the Olaf that you drew in the background or the setting that you chose to put him in. Send that to me on Class Dojo, and I'll try to put it up in my next video. If you have any ideas of something you'd like to learn how to draw, just comment below, let me know what you want, and I'll try to make a video for you while we're all staying at home for social distancing. I hope everyone's staying safe out there. Wash your hands, and I'll talk to you next time.